Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Game, and we are returning to Let's Throw of Democracy for playing Spain in the Utopia Futurist uh, kind of setup. So, let's take a look at where our country is, what we need to do, and how we're gonna get to a futurist society. Now, I'm very concerned because we are a little bit more than half into our first term over here, and our popularity is kind of tanking. It's still at 25%, so that's really not that great to get to the next term, and I do think we need that second term to be able to implement a couple of our policies. So that's a problem, and I want to find out what that problem is, and how we can fix it, and how we can get to get at least a next term. So the first thing I think that is worthwhile to point out is look at our main largest voter groups over here. If we do sort that here by membership, you can see of course everyone is in a certain voter group, and one of the issues that we have is the civil servant strike. Well, that's unfortunate. I don't think we could mo do much about that. But the other problem is the ministerial re re resignation here. So we do at least want to prevent that another minister is going to resignate. Uh, and that is probably of these people going to be this gentleman here, Juan Martin Mojales. Um, he only is, he's very disloyal at the moment. So I would very much like to keep him around. Um, or the other alternative is we are going to reshuffle our entire cabinet. That would cost 10 political power. I don't think that's worthwhile to do now. We can do so potentially for free after we've come to the election. But we should prevent him from resigning. He is... he likes patriots and he likes liberal people. If we make these two groups a little bit more happy, that might be a good idea. The second thing is, if we do look at the other groups here that are pretty big, that's the religious people of all. That is a whooping 68% of the population, so almost everyone is religious. And that is a big issue because these people are not necessarily too happy. If we do look at the voter groups, which I think should be over here. So yeah, let's pick someone over here who is semi-religious. Um, this person here is somewhat 66% religious, and it does have an opinion modifier of minus 26%. So that's bad. These people, a lot of them, and they don't like us. Now, the big issue with that is there are a lot of policies going in that are that are detrimental to these people that I have absolutely no intention of reworking. Gay marriage, organ donation, family planning, gender transition. I will not be cancelling these these policies in this playthrough. That just doesn't that just doesn't work for me in a futurist playthrough. So there's very little here that we can do to to uh, make them a little bit more happier. The other thing is, if we look at the membership here, we did already implement the technology grants and that is going to bring that down. But the other two that are really driving the membership and which I would actually like to cancel because again then that problem here would be becoming slightly lower, that's school prayers and face school subsidies. Both of these actually do need to go at some point, but here's the other issue, they make them happier. If we cancel these policies, these guys will be, it will be taking a while for these guys to become fewer, but they will be unhappy very, very immediately. And that is going to be a big, big problem here. So we can't really do that right away. We do need to find some way to bring down their membership over time without necessarily screwing with them entirely. So that's the one big objective here. And the other thing is we do need to make them happier, at least in the short run. And I think there's one way how we can do that. And there's one policy uh, that I would like to take a look at. One of them could be gambling. I'm not particularly keen on gambling. It does make the Liberals a little bit more happy. And Liberals are a very big group. But they do make religious people unhappy. It doesn't really do that much else. But the big whooping issue here is it's a 30% It's a thirty political power to cancel that. So no, that's, uh, that's a no, uh, even though it was suggested. Right. The other bit is this one. Legalise sex works. Uh, sex work. Now, personally, I'm of the opinion that that is generally a good idea to have that in sort of a controlled environment rather than it being completely pushed underground. But if we do look at how it's represented in the game, it's very... Conservatives hate it, religious people hate it, and parents do hate it. Liberal people do like it a little bit, but altogether not that much. And I think this would be a very, very good policy to get rid of and uh, throw a bone basically to the religious people, which then again would help us out quite a bit. 
Now, it's going to upset liberals a little bit, and the problem here is going to be similar, because this is 65% of the population, and they are only not really that much uh, better than the religious. So, it would be great if we could help out on the liberal front as well, plus it would help with Juan Martin over here. So, I think that would be another good idea to approach to make it a little bit more likely that we're going to be elected. And we can do a little bit on that front as well. So, I think we're going to get rid of sex work, but we're going to do other things that are a little bit more liberal in turn. And one of the things that we should note is that this actually derives of gender equality. So, since I do have an interest of keeping gender equality relatively high in sort of our utopian world here, I think what we can do is increase the Gender Discrimination Act. Now, that will make democracy better, it will, gender, it will make gender equality better, but most importantly, it will make the Liberals a lot happier. So that goes up from 12% to 19%, so that's a 77 percentage point gain. It does mean Conservatives are going to be a little bit less happy, but there are fewer Conservatives than there are Liberals, so this is definitely going to be a net gain for us. And the other thing is it will increase the membership in Liberalists over time, and it's not really that expensive, it's only two political power. So that is something that we are going to do right away. It also doesn't cost any money, basically. So I think that's that's the first good thing to do over here. The second thing is the Food Standard Agency. Now, one of the things that we should note is GDP is pretty much maxed out at this point. That's lovely, but there are negative as effects associated with a high GDP. And one of them is uh, potentially obesity. We don't have that problem now, but I would like to not get that problem on the one hand. And on the other hand, there's going to make liberals a little bit more happy. Health is going to go up. Food prices are going to go up. But also plant-based diets are going to go up, which is generally a good thing, because of that will reduce carbon emissions and all of that. And if health goes up, that's also going to be nice. Well, it's maxed out already, so that doesn't matter too much. But at least we're not going to get into the obesity problem, hopefully. So these are the two very easy fixes here, how can we can make liberals a little bit more happy. So I'm going to take these, and I think that's just generally a good idea to do that. So that's fine. Um, let's go to the next things here and see whether we can do anything here. So we've got ooh, a couple of negative things. We've got pollution kicking in. Yeah, well, that was to be expected. Environmentalists dislike that a lot, which is going to be a big issue, and health is going to decrease. But there's one good thing about this, and that is actually environmentalist membership goes up, and environmentalists should still be the ones that do like us a lot. Okay, real estate bubble is a thing. We do need to think about uh, state housing here. Young people dislike it, poor people dislike it. Yeah, that's that's a bummer. And we've actually got an illegal immigration crisis because all of our positive uh, pull factors, basically having a good economy and so on, that does drive that does drive immigration. So that is a bit of an issue. Um, not too much, but I think we should address that. On the other hand, we've got the space private industry. That's uh, very lovely because increase in GDP, yeah, that's nice. Everyone likes us 3% more. That's also fantastic. So that's good. And uh, there's another situation that is imminent, multinational tax evasion. Yeah, we might need to address that by diverted profit tax. And we are concerned about child labor law. We could compromise, leave the law and change or criminalize child labor. I think we're going to do that because it's probably going to be taken up by liberal socialist parents. Yeah, GDP goes down a little bit. But everyone else here likes that, and that is very, very lovely to see. Good. Polls? Yeah, okay, we are still tanking here, 15% approval. But I'm hoping, hoping that that is going to be improved by some of these decisions here. I really don't know. How are you looking? 0 0.6. Yeah, that's kind of bad. Okay, and we've got a lot of negative effects kicking in here. Uh, still, I do think environmentalists, you still like us. You still like us by quite a bit. And your membership should start to increase. So it might actually be a good thing for us uh, to, to have done that. So yeah, I think these uh, two things are good. And then I think we just need to throw that one bone to uh, the religious people here. And we are... Oh, can we not cancel that? 15 political power. We don't have that. Oh, we do need to be careful. We don't. We only earn in 12 here. So we need to save up a little bit on that. Uh, but that's going to be all right. Now, the other thing that I think we should get rid of is private prisons. That's only going to cost us one political power here, but uh, it does 
make liberals a little bit more happy. It does make conservatives, uh, that might be a net zero here, uh, but I do think it's going to be helpful to go uh, and help out the liberals a little bit. Also, the trade unions are not going to be quite as um, unhappy with us, so we're going to cancel that, we're going to have state-run prisons, and there's that. Right, so that is that thing. We could go for a couple of other ones, but I do want to keep a little bit here in terms of political power because we do need to save at least three, uh, so we can only spend eight. I don't think there's that much that we can do for eight uh, political power here. I am very concerned about the environment. It's starting to tick up again, uh, but that is one of the biggest driver here of the respiratory disease. Hospital overcrowding still a big thing. If we could just push that down a little bit, that would be fantastic. But healthcare demand is probably also driven largely by immigration and illegal immigration. So, given the immigration crisis here, and given that our high GDP is going to be a pull factor for so much immigration, I do think that unfortunately we need to address that in some fashion here. And illegal immigration is actually pretty high. How about legal immigration? Also very high. I mean, personally, I, I like the idea, but we just need to be a little bit careful of how exactly we are structuring this. Uh, there are two things that we could address uh, to do this. One is the citizenship test, which I think might be, might be useful. It's gonna be detrimental to liberals and ethnic minorities, but not actually that much. It's only a percentage point on each. It's gonna drive down immigration, it's not going to do anything on illegal immigration though, and that is that is the more pressing concern. So what instead we're going to do is we're going to look at border controls here. Because I think we probably need to increase that at least somewhat. Drive down legal and drive down illegal immigration. That only affects illegal illegal immigration. Which I think is going to be alright. How much are liberals hating this? 2%. Maybe that's a little bit too high. No, no, no. We are not going to do anything here. I think it's going to be all right. I would, I would have liked to do something there. Right. The other issue is still the environment, uh, and one of the things, one of the other biggest groups is actually motorists. So, if we got to electric cars in initiatives, I think this is this is somewhat aligned with being a futurist playthrough. We're not going to get completely rid of cars this this time around, but driving down oil demand making motorists a little bit more happy and increasing the environment and increasing the membership in the environment, that's great. Um, and that is also actually not increasing the opinion of environmentalists of us, just their membership. And that's pretty good because their opinion is already relatively high and I don't want to increase their complacency. So if they can remain one of our core voter group, that would be fantastic. So yeah, I think we're going to do that. We do have the money. We do have a little bit of a surplus here. So that should be a good policy, I think. Right, seven political power. I think we're going to save them up and see whether anything is going to come up this time around. Okay, that sir, that minister wants to talk to us. That's not good. And we do need to talk about it, the public right of way. So basically, can people walk on sort of shorelines and stuff like that? Um, I think we're going to expand that because probably we have a lot more farmer, uh, a lot more socialists than we do have farmers. So I think that's going to be okay. Budget is still looking fine. We still are running a surplus here, actually. That's lovely. We do... Ooh, Jesus. Uh, we do have the Angels of Heavenly Justice who are not doing good things to us. So, yeah. Thanks for the advice. They are out there to murder us. So that's not necessarily great. Um, okay, anything else? Situation is imminent. Obesity. Oh, yeah, look at that. So it's good that we are reducing these things through a couple of things. Or these impacts here through a couple of things. Okay, that's good to see. That is good to see. You would like to have body cameras. I'm not sure I like that policy. Oh yeah, liberals do like it. Conservatives hate it. Trade unions hate us, hate it, and they do hate us already. State employees dislike it. Well, state employees are a very large group. So I'm not too happy about that. I think we're going to leave it as is for now, basically. Yeah, I think it's we will have to we'll have to keep it like that and we I do very much hope that Juan Martinez will stick around here for a while. Right. Okay. 
religious people. I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to cancel this policy here. And I'm really hoping that you're not going to murder me for it. That would be, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Okay, real estate bubble is still a thing. Now, I do like private housing. Incredibly enough, it doesn't do anything on the price level there. So, it does actually decrease a lot of things. So if we were to increase state housing by, let's say, this amount, the real estate bubble would go down somewhat. Everyone would kind of like it, especially the poor and the socialists. Capitalists would dislike it because we are meddling with the market here. Capitalists do dislike us, but not too much for now. So I think it's going to be all right, actually. Mm, do we want to go for, for food labeling so that the obesity thing is not going to be that relevant? And six political power, that's, that's quite a bit. Well, well, well. We do, we should try to address the rail strike at some point. It's only the commuters, and they, there's not that many of them. It doesn't have that many other negative effects, actually, so it's not that bad. Hospital overcrowding is actually ticking up again, and that's probably due to immigration. Yeah, immigration is very high. Very, very high, actually. How can, how can it be so... Okay, illegal immigration, where's that? That's here, right? Oh yeah, that's a barbed wire thing. Right, yeah, okay, there was the people smuggling that did drive it up, I think. Hmm. Because we did allow a couple of people in, we are now dealing with sort of everyone coming in. Hmm, great, isn't it? Immigration rules. We could ask people to only come in with the job offer. That would reduce immigration. Liberals actually do like that because it's going to go open for, to open borders. Interesting that that increases illegal immigration. Right. Yeah, but I do think border controls probably the thing to do here. At least reduce the illegal immigration to at least help out on some of these issues. Right, let's see whether the religious people here are going to like us a little bit more. Ooh, a high-rise blaze. That's not good. So that's uh, sort of the... Ooh, there's a... <laughs> There's a failed assassination attempt, and I'm thinking that that were the religious people. Tech advantage? Okay, that's pretty nice to see. Situation imminent? Uh, environmental protests? That's also not necessarily bad, because the primary thing it will do is in, it will increase the membership in the environmentalists. So that's not too bad. Very healthy surplus here, so that's nice to see. Oh, and our popularity has just shot up immensely. That is what I like to see. That is definitely uh, quite perfect, actually, here to see. Right, I'm only ba I'm only wishing that this guy here does not go away. And one of the things that we might want to do for you is to increase jury trial. Just because liberals love that idea, you are one of the liberals, so I think that's great. It will also reduce corruption. The only thing, it's, it's relatively expensive, but I am going to do it. Right, that's perfect actually. That's that's very nice. Uh, legal aid. I think this is this is somewhat similar in that it's only a good thing, but it's uh, relatively expensive to do that. So, yeah, let's not. I think it's it's a, a relatively small effect there, um, for ultimately very little that we can do. Right, environmentally still somewhat recovering. That's good to see. How's the po uh, pollution doing? Yeah, it's actually decreasing here. So that's good to see. Um, how about the rent real estate bubble? Don't think we've changed that much, do we? Illegal immigration. You're still continuing to rise, even though we've um, increased the border controls here. And it's only going to come down somewhat minimally here. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Well, the ghetto effect will go away too. So that's not ideal. We only have a couple of turns here to the election. Still, our popularity is doing much better. And religious people are getting a little bit more happy, which is also nice because it will reduce the threat here and we might actually survive our turn here. So that's nice to see. What can we do for six political power? We could go social care. Social care might be useful because it does indeed drive down healthcare demand. And it's very it's one of the very, very few policies that is actually capable of reducing a healthcare demand and thereby hospital overcrowding. 
And you know what? We do have a certain surplus here, so let's do it. We are screwing with the capitalists a lot here, but I think it's going to be alright if we're going to go for that tech sort of environment. It's only a 6% 6 drop here, which is not that significant and it's very expensive. Uh, but I think at least intermediately, it's a good policy to reduce healthcare demand. Yeah, doesn't leave us with that much uh, left. We don't have anything that we can do over here. Anything that we can increase or would like to increase anywhere well, not really. No, no, no. Needles. Oh, Race Discrimination Act. I think that is also good for the Liberals. It drives up Liberal membership. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to be fine with that. Okay, fine. Here we go. Right, here we go. Environmental protests are up. Again, it drives up environmentalist membership. So that is actually going to carry us over the election, I think, and going to be helpful for us. Now, that does, of course, mean uh, that we are going to reject the plans for air travel here uh, because environmentalists are now a very sizable proportion of our population and we're going to get rid of that. Ooh, we do need to address multinational tax evasion otherwise uh, it's going to be a little bit of an awesome thing. Right, uh, a couple of things how we could address the tax evasion. We could reduce taxes. I don't think we want to because basically GDP is doing as good as it can um, and I would like to gain more money to spend on things. So I'm not going to reduce taxes Instead, what we do need to do then is either of two things. So we could go for public tax returns. That, I think, does um, go against that. Costing us 14 political power. Wealthy liberals dislike it, so that's not necessarily great. Or, more importantly, diverted profit tax. So that is uh, quite an interesting concept. I'm not going to talk too much about that. It's going to drive down foreign relations. That's not that important. Socialists like it. Capitalists dislike it. That sort of normal thing. And self-employed people actually do like it. And it's going to actually generate some income. So I think we're going to do that. I don't think we need to have it very high. Um, although the actual effects here don't seem to matter that much. I don't want to be too bad um, towards the capitalists. So I'm going to keep it relatively low here. Um, at around 800 million profit. So yeah, that should be okay. But most importantly, it's going to prevent that negative modifier from kicking in. So I think that's okay. Now, the other thing is the rail strike. I would like to get rid of that. I can see two things. One is the state rail company. We could make, make, max that out. And that would get rid of the rail strike. Perfect, you would think. Uh, capitalists dislike it. Okay, I don't care about that too much. But trade unionists would like it. That's nice. They're, the one, well, they're one of the groups um, that hate, sort of actively hate us over here. So... It would be nice to make them a little bit more happy, but the flip side is it would increase their membership. And I do not want that at this moment because they are so unhappy with us that I basically don't want to have more of them. So there's that. Um, all of the other effects here are actually not that important to me. Uh, socialist state employees, that's all kind of okay. Rail usage, that's that's useful. That's the one good thing here. Uh, productivity is, is kind of okay, but honestly, we do have relatively fine productivity at this point. Yeah, it's almost maxed out even. So I don't think we want the best state rail company. Um, right now, it really doesn't do that much for us. Um, at the current funding level, it only really drives up commuter membership a little bit, um, which is okay. They're relatively happy with us, uh, but all in all, we don't really need them, I think. So the other alternative here is to just get completely rid of it. And that is, I think, what we're actually going to do here. So we are going to privatize the rail um, companies and we are going to leave them to do their things. It's going to generate some income here, uh, which is lovely. It's going to get rid of all the cost items associated with that. Uh, and more importantly, it's probably going to get rid of the rail strike. OK, uncompetitive economy is gone. And indeed, we are showing high productivity now. So all that's fairly lovely. Campaign speeches are available. That's good, too because we will need to boost that and we are facing a dilemma here. Now, there's currently a proposal to increase the rights of tenants in rented accommodation. The fear of being suddenly thrown out. So do we improve their rights? I think we do. I th I'm hoping that that will reduce uh, the... No, it just doesn't do anything. Well, that's unfortunate, but socialists and poor people um, are a lot more than uh, we do have, currently have, but I would have hoped that that does something uh, for the real estate bubble, or against the real estate bubble. 
Look at that, 75% approval. That's 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 what I like to see um, as we're coming into the election over here. Great. I only need you sir, to hang in and keep keep going over here. Right, we do have a lot of political power actually. We do generate a lot of that uh, now, so that's great to see uh, because of our high popularity. And that I think is very, very lovely. We are gonna get rid of the rail strike here. We should see the rail industry doing some things here. Actually reducing trade union membership, that's good. Rail usage, it would be lovely if he could increase that. I'm not sure why it doesn't. Yeah, probably just the delay over here, but ultimately that should be pretty good for us. Right, so let's actually do one of the things that I would have liked to do a long time ago, um, and which really we haven't really gotten through uh, to that yet. So, and that is the, where, where are you? I want to introduce the space industry. Okay, space program, 24 political power. Okay, that's more than I anticipated. Right, that's a little bit unfortunate. Okay, 24, well we could save that up uh, at this moment. So let's keep at least seven political power uh, kicking around. So let's spend 12 or better even 11 so that we are a little bit cautioned off from anything there. Hospital overcrowding. We did not, in, no, we did introduce the life, no, sorry, lifespan, the social care, right? Welfare, social care, state pensions, social care. Yeah, you should be reducing healthcare demand here very, very slowly. And hospital overcrowding still a thing. Illegal immigration crisis still in, in big swing over here. And that is still the border control has, it has kicked in, but we are still just keeping afloat over here. Well, we'll need to think about that. Pollution is actually dropping, that's that's good to see. And environmentalist protests should also be dropping as the environment is actually becoming better as some of these issues that we have introduced here are slowly and surely becoming better. Respiratory diseases, at least they are falling again, even though they are very high. And hospital overcrowding, not much we can do for that. I think we've maxed out everything that we can do. The only thing how we could prevent hospital overcrowding now is to reduce immigration. Reducing immigration has the downside of not being that great for the liberals. Hmm. Now the other thing is in terms of transport. I would love to see this. High speed rail subsidies. I think this is this is one of the keystones of the futurist playthrough here. It would reduce car usage, it would reduce air travel. So that's all very good. Commuters are happy, productivity goes up, international trade goes up. I think that's a very good uh, long-term policy. So I think that might be uh, what we are looking at, but it is very expensive. So maybe not for now. Um, maybe let's look for some easy fixes here uh, that we can sort of smuggle in as we're waiting for the other things to grow a little bit. One of the things is in public services, we could go for things like this. Uh, youth club subsidies, socialists, youth, parents, everyone is a little bit more happy. That's lovely. And this basically for free. Yeah, I think we can spend seven, right? So let's go for youth club subsidies. Doesn't cost that much. Everyone is a little bit more happy, uh, which is just generally a good thing. And then the other thing in public services is the youth politics council. Also very, very inexpensive. And it does make the young people a little bit happier. Um, so that's that's lovely to see, I think. And we are going to go for the next turn here. Is that election turn already? No, not quite. Okay, rail strike has ended. That's good. Gig economy pressure. Well, that's not great. Everyone hates that a little bit. Right, we've got a good surplus over here. Rail strike again has ended. That's good to see. Unemployment is ticking up again, interestingly. It's a relatively high in unemployment. Why is that? Oh, immigration. Yeah, immigration at this level, it's really, I think it's really not sustainable. We're going to get race riots and stuff, so we do need to be a little bit more careful about that. Also, this person over here is a trade unionist and socialist, which does like, dislike, very much dislike the gig economy. We might reintroduce um, some of the labor laws at some point in the future. But for now, I think it's nice to have the high productivity here. Indeed, we could think about, I mean, the technological advantage here is driving productivity. Technology should be driving 
productivity upwards. And it does have that sort of exponential effect or squared effect or something. So the more technologically uh, advanced we will get, the less we'll need uh, to be sort of the open market set up here. So that's good. Right, okay, anything we can do. What did, what did you want here? Yeah, I know that you're gonna leave. I don't want you to leave next turn. And I want you to, we probably exchange our entire cabinet as we roll into the next um, episode here. Right, we do need to, do we need, I think we are fine. I think with these uh, popularities here, we don't need to be too concerned here, right? We don't have a lot of activists. We don't have a lot of members, basically none. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, we could make certain pledges here. Uh, human development. Right, raise that by 25 percentage points, so basically to 100%. I think not. Secularity of education. Some people will not like that. Fundraising. Yeah, we are not doing as good as we need to, so that's one issue. And we could do some media stunts here with trustworthiness. We are considered very cons uh, very uh, compassionate, so that's okay. We could also think about some of these speeches over here. And I think it's going to be nine political power, so yeah, it is. So let's think about what we might want to do here. So there are there's the middle income group. It's a fairly small group. There's the there's the commuters. You are there are few of you. No, that's not that few of you. So, raising you would be kind of okay. We've got the young people versus the retired. That's not great. Poor versus the wealthy. Well, poor people are very supportive already. So, don't think we need those. Liberals versus conservatives. I think that's a very good uh, pick here because it will simply... We just have so many more of these people than we have of those. So, I think that's okay. Retired versus young. Trade unions versus self-employed. Both of these groups kind of dislike us and no state employee versus self-employed hmm interesting one yeah or just middle income make you a little bit more happy can we get can we get other speeches I wonder so wait a minute electioneering here we are manifesto speeches right okay yeah we can okay let's make the religious people a little bit happy there's a lot of them so that's lovely um, and what else do we want then? Liberals against conservatives, and yeah, that's a two of against the three. I think that might not be worthwhile. But I mean, this one definitely is. Commuters should be a little bit happier. Young people, no, no, no. This is all fine. Trade unions, self-employed again, no. Retired versus young, no. Socialists versus capitalists, yeah, there are a lot more socialists, but I do not want to completely alienate the capitalists and a lot of the things that we are doing is already exactly doing that so no how about the wealthy there's very few of you you know what i think i think these two are fine over here we'll give that speech it's gonna cost us nine political power um but it is gonna be a good boost here i think I've got at least some percentage points, especially for the religious people that will actually potentially allow us to implement some of the policies uh, that are reducing their approval ratings without them actively murdering them. So that would be lovely. And that might actually bridge the gap where we where we redu reduce their membership here. That's, I think, a good idea. Right, so that's the last thing that we're going to do here. Uh, anything else then in terms of policies that we really, really want? I think everything seems to be fine. I don't think there's anything big that I want to introduce except for the space program, but we don't have enough political power for that. So that's going to be all right. Tax, no, I think everything here is fine. We could, of course, think about a couple of these things. Tax colleges in particular are also interesting because it's going to drive up technology. Maybe that's what we're going to do. Or still the high-speed rail subsidies. You know what? As, as the last thing here of our first term, we are going to do that. It's going to make commuters extremely happy. Going to drive down car usage, which I very, very much approve. Um, it's going to cost us a bunch because it's five billion. But productivity gain, international trade gain, air travel uh, reduction, unemployment reduction, car usage. I think this is great. 
and that actually has the potential at, of at some point uh, reducing respiratory diseases here especially as the environment should be doing much better with that car usage probably is still one of the biggest issues here car usage and air travel exactly right so last thing to do let's see how the election is gonna turn out here I'm very positive actually yeah look at that look at that that's a very very big boost here um, we don't get a lot of activist boost we don't get a lot of funding but we do definitely get a lot of turnout so that is very very lovely indeed 85% of the vote that is great I am gonna do a, a post election reshuffle but that my friend is gonna have to wait until next time so thank you very much for watching do leave a like and let me know your thoughts what we should be doing here as we have gained some popularity for our actual goals. Bye bye guys.